Amen. So we're going to be talking about a preferred future. We continue to talk about faith unpacked. As you can see, we've been unpacking faith in our services, talking about faith, the word faith, going to the scriptures in Hebrews, that faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen yet. Amen. It's the substance of things hoped for. What do you hope for in your life? What are the things you're looking forward to in the future? That's the faith that you have right now in the present that will take you into the things for the future that you're hoping for. What are the things you're hoping for in God? What are the dreams that God has given you, the purposes that God has given you, the family that God has given you, the people around you? What are those hopes that you have for those relationships? Those are the things that faith can take hold of and be able to lead us into this place. Sometimes we wonder how we're going to share with people about Jesus. All you have to tell people is what Jesus has done for you. That's where you can start. And then you tell them what Jesus has done for them. And that's how you get into the gospel story. You tell your story, the God story that you have, the testimony as we call it. People's lives will be changed and touched wherever you go, whether it be at your workplace or your neighbors or in your family. Tell them about the good things that God has done for you this week or last week or for someone else, like you said, this lady that received a baby from the Lord. Isn't it wonderful? God restored. Just with Job, Job lost family members, God restored again. And so maybe some of you are saying this morning, I'm in that same place. I've had losses. I've had disasters in my family. I've had things come against me. My past is against me. You know, the enemy is going to remind you of your past the whole time. The enemy is going to bring up the past. The enemy is going to romanticize the past for you. And so many times us as Christians, what we do is even with the move of God, we romanticize the past and we demonize the future. That's what begins to happen. We romanticize our past. It was good, the good old days, the good things that happened. And so many times we don't move forward into the things that God has for us. Or we become so used to something that we carry with us that it's become part of who we are. We call it my sickness. My disease, my condition, my things, my lack, all of these things, we often make these things part of who we are. And God has not designed us to stay in that place. God has designed us to move forward into a preferred future. God has a preferred future for you. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, which is our main verse for today, says that we do not live by sight, but we live by faith. How many of you know this? And this is the only way that you're going to step into the things of God is to put faith in Christ. To live by faith, to put your hope and your trust in the Word of God. What Morris, you said it this morning, you preached the message that I'm preaching in a very short nutshell this morning already, that you have to put your trust in what God says about you. Identity, what a great thing. All of us are born with an identity. God has given you identity. You've got a unique fingerprint. How many of you know that? Look at that finger of yours, that fingerprint that you guys put at your wedding day on that thing. These days you've got to take fingerprints and all kinds of things. Check that you're not a criminal. Eh? Put your fingerprint on there. You look at that fingerprint. It's unique to your body. It's unique to who you are. God knows he put his fingerprint on you and he said, Peter, you're unique. I made you unique with unique gifts and things to give to this world. And you continue to minister to people in the way that God has blessed you with those gifts. Amen. And you see the same for each one of you. You've got unique gifts. You've got unique purpose. You've got unique destiny in you. And God has placed it there. It can only be realized by faith in Jesus. So many times we have dreams outside of God. So many times we have purpose outside of God. So many times we write down, Lord, here's my plan for the future. But we do not pray about it. We do not bring it to the Lord. We do not consult God. We do not ask the Holy Spirit to lead us in the decisions we're making. But God has got unique plans for you. And I believe this morning that he wants to pour out those dreams and visions and purposes that he has in his spirit this morning again in your heart. And he wants to remind you how beautiful you are. He wants to remind you how precious you are. He wants to remind you how precious you are to him. How many of you know I know that you're precious to God? How do I know this? Because the Father said He will send His Son, Jesus, to die on a cross for you. He proved His love for you. He showed you how much He loved you by saying, I will die for you, Mandy, before you were good. Before you were a good person, a good girl that came to church, a good person that sat in church and worshipped God. Before you did the right things, before you had the right thoughts. Even this morning, if you're sitting here this morning and you're saying, I'm not a good person, you don't know me, Julius. You don't know my thoughts that I have right through the week. You don't know my actions. You don't know the things that I've done in the past. You don't know what's happened in my past. 
But I want to say to you, that's the minute when I say, this is not time that you begin to make the right decision today so that your future may look different to your past. That you may be redeemed from your past. That the enemy can't use it against you anymore because anything that is hidden in the dark, the enemy will use against you. Anything that you're not exposing to the light of the word of God, the enemy will bring against you. And so this morning I want to say to you, we're going to see a preferred future after this service where you will say, God, I want what you have for me. God, I desire freedom in your word. I desire freedom that the blood of Christ has brought me with. Lord, I thank you this morning that you've purchased me with your blood, that you set me free on the cross of Calvary. I want to read you something that I wrote down this week as an introduction to you this morning that says, maybe your past is brokenness. All of us here can say there's some brokenness in our past. Isn't it true? Maybe you say there's sickness. My past is full of sickness. My family history is full of sickness. Maybe you're saying there's bondage in my family. My dad was an alcoholic. That's why I became an alcoholic. My grandfather was an alcoholic. My dad was an adulterer. Therefore, I have committed adultery. Therefore, these things have fallen upon me. There might be bondage in your past, in your family history. All of these things might be true. There might be lack. We've always been a poor family. We'll die a poor family. How many of you have seen these things over and over again? We won't amount to much because we, you know, we were some of those poor people that lived on the other side. We're never going to be as rich as that person. We're, never going to, we're always going to look at people that have money and we're going to be jealous of them. We're always going to envy those people. There might be lack in your life. Are you one of those that say, oh, but they don't know what it feels like. They've got money. There's something wrong in your heart because the mindset that you've built up is that there will never be breakthrough in your life. The mindset that you've built up in your life is that God doesn't want to bless you, that he wants to keep you in that position. But I want to tell you today that God has a preferred future for you, and you can realize that when you serve God and know what his word teaches about this. And there's, maybe there's death in your family. How many of you feel there's unnecessary death in your family? People dying from sickness before their time. People dying in accidents before their time. Things happening in death, in the area of death over your family. These are things that can be from your past. But I want to say to you today, in your current situation, by living by faith in Jesus, you can experience wholeness and not brokenness. You can experience healing and not sickness. You can experience this morning abundance instead of a lack in your life. You can experience life this morning instead of death. You see, God turns all of those things around. The things that the enemy has sent out to destroy you is the things, the very thing that God will use for his glory. The very things that the enemy thought was an enemy or a weapon against you is the things that God turns around and says, you see, that sickness will not lead to death. That bondage will not lead to imprisonment, but it will lead to freedom in Christ. When it's in your darkest hour, God will come in. You see, before the light comes up in the morning, it's the darkest time of the night. How many of you know this? And God's light comes through into your life and you experience his goodness and his mercy and his grace all of a sudden because God has got a good plan for you, Abdon. God's got a plan to bless you and not to curse you. A plan to give you strength and not to keep you weak, amen. God has got purposes in his word for you that you need to discover and God wants to make you aware this morning that you don't have to be in the situation that you're sitting in right now. Will you take hold of the promises of God by faith this morning? And it starts with surrendering to Christ this morning. I want to take you back to the book of Exodus. I'm not going to read out of it, but I want to make you aware of something. When the Israelites were in Israel, in, in exile in Egypt, they were under the curse. They were under a place of bondage and slavery. And you and I, born into this world, came into this world as sinful people, amen, under the bondage of what Adam brought into this world, the sin that Adam brought in. And you and I said we're born into sin. But I want to remind you this morning that God is more powerful than anything that's over your life, anything that the enemy has brought against you. I'm going to read to you the 10 plagues of Egypt. How many of you have looked at the 10 plagues before? You say, where are we going? Back to Exodus this morning. Yes, we're going deep into the Old Testament. I want to remind you of something this morning about this, these curses or these um, plagues that came against the people there. And God sent them. The Ten Commandments became, uh, is, the Ten Commandments was also symbolic of the fullness of the moral law of God. But the ten ancient plagues of Egypt, Egypt represented the fullness of God, expressing of justice and judgment. How many of you know brought, God brought judgment upon the Pharaoh because he didn't want to let his people go? And how many of you know that God is also now coming on your behalf against the enemy because he doesn't want to let you go? 
I spoke to someone in this week, and I said, you know, these things that have happened in your family over and over again, it's called family curses or bloodline curses. The enemy doesn't want to let go. He's going to try and come in through your family line, but you can stop that under the blood of Jesus. Through salvation, you can stop the things that are happening over and over and over in your family by coming under the blood of Christ. I want to remind you of these 10 plagues that God sent against the Egyptians. He says in the first one is the water turned to blood. Remember that one. And then in Egypt, you know that every plague that God sent was against a God that they worshipped in Egypt. Man, these people had idols that you can't even think of. We think we don't have idols these days. Our idols have only changed names. Let me tell you today, our idols have only changed names. The idols are still there. Just go back and think where you spend most of your time and your effort and your energy in. That might be your idol. If God is not number one, He cannot be number two. Let me say that to you again. If God is not number one in your life, he cannot be number two. God is never going to be satisfied with being number two in your life. If there's something before God, it's an idol. If there's something that you endure more than God, it's an idol. If there's something you love more than God, it's an idol. If you spend all of your mental energy on something more than on God, it's an idol in your life and it's going to bring you down somewhere. These plagues represented idols that the Egyptians bowed down to. The first one was Hapi, the Egyptian god of the Nile. This Egyptian god was a water bearer. And that's why God turned the water into blood, to show that His power is greater than the Egyptian God over water. And you see, God shows up and He says, I'm going to show you, Pharaoh, that I've got the power over this water, not harpy, this God that you bow down to, this idol that you bow down to. Listen to the next one. The next one was when God sent frogs to come out of the river. The frogs came out of the river. And this represented the Egyptian goddess of fertility or water or renewal that had a head of a frog. And they bowed down to this idol. And God would send these frogs coming from the Nile River to say, I will send more frogs than you've ever seen in your life before, Pharaoh. I'll send them out from the river. And God dealt with that God. And then the next one is Geb, the Egyptian god of the earth. The Egyptian god of Geb was over the dust of the earth. The Egyptian plague, lice from the dust of the earth came out. God showed, I've got the power over the earth, over the dust of the earth. And how many of you know that they used the earth to plant their crops for different things, to make clothing and to plant crops for food? And God showed, I'm in control of the earth. How many of you know this? That's why the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will turn from their wicked ways and pray, I will heal there. Amen. You see, God is in charge of the land as well. If our lands are not producing crops, if our businesses are not producing profits, there's something that we are bowing down to that God wants to remove out of your life. If we are not seeing breakthrough in the area of finances, there's a blockage somewhere, and we need to release it by blessing the Lord with our first fruits. We need to give to the Lord of the tithe and the offering. We need to honor God in our finances and in our life, in our devotion and in everything that we do. You see, God is a jealous God. Number four was Kepri, the Egyptian God of creation, movement of the sun, rebirth. Kepri, the Egyptian God, had the head of a fly. (laughs) A head of a fly. Evil, ugly looking things, but these people bowed down to these things because they believed that they control the nature around them. But God would send these flies, swarms of flies. God would send out and say, I'm going to show you that I have control over everything, not these gods that you bow down to. Hathor, the number five, Egyptian goddess of love and protection. Usually this Egyptian goddess was depicted with the head of a cow. Mm. Death of the cattle and the livestock. So the death of the cattle and the livestock started to happen. Number six was Isis. How many of you heard of Isis before? Egyptian goddess of medicine and peace, Egyptian plague. Ashes turned to boils and sores. God released the ashes over the land that broke out in people with boils and sores. Sickness came upon them. And God said, I'm the one that has control over everything. I'm the healer. God shows them that I'm the one that will show you that these gods will not be the ones that are in control. Number seven, nut. We have some nut cases still around today. Uh, Not in the form of gods, but uh, we have some nutty people. Amen. 
Egyptian goddess of the sky. Egyptian plague that came was the hail that rained down. Do you know that this hail fell to the ground, and when it fell to the ground, it formed fire? Imagine that sight. Hail that fell down that went into fire, that destroyed everything, that destroyed the crops, that destroyed the lives of people. And this is where God showed that I am control over nature around you. I have control over all of these things, not the Egyptian goddess of the sky. Come on, can you people think this? What, what are people worshiping sometimes? Horoscopes. People look at the skies and they say, what are the stars telling me? What, are this, what, are my star, what is my star sign? Mm-hmm. Some of you need to get rid of the stuff. You're allowing some things to come into your life. You see, the minute you fall under another truth, it doesn't become a truth anymore. It becomes a curse. You see, the minute you bow down to these things, and some people are led by this, even Christians in the church, they will go and consult people that can tell them their future. Fortune tellers. How many of you know many times if you open yourself up willingly to these things, spirits will attach themselves to you. That's what happens if you willingly do something. I'm not talking about walking into a shopping center and there's some ungodly music playing. I'm not talking about that. Then you are protected by the blood. But if you buy, purchase that music online, on iStore, iTunes, wherever, and you put it onto your phone and you listen to certain words and you open yourself up to things, those things will begin to influence you and they will attract certain spirits into your life. Be careful what you let into your life. Who you consult about what? Do not read the horoscope. That's rubbish. We consult the God of the stars, not the stars. Amen. Listen to number nine, number eight. Seth. Egyptian god of storms and disorder, Egyptian plague, the locust was sent against it. You see, number seven and number eight was quite linked to each other because the one was destroying the, 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 the fields or the crops that they were using to make clothing from. The other one was destroying the crops that they used for food. And number nine is Ra. You've all heard of Ra. You see it in Egyptian mythology. Ra, the sun god, Egyptian plague, the three days of complete darkness. Doesn't this remind you of something? It happened in the Bible. Three days of darkness. The sun God, Egyptian God. God says, no, I will switch the sun off when I want to switch the sun off. I will switch the sun on when I want to switch the sun on. I am the God that is in control of everything. Can you see how powerful the God is that we serve? Can you see the things that we allow into our life that works against the truth of God's word? Now, Pharaoh was the last one, the ultimate power of, of Egypt. And the plague that came was the death of the firstborn. The plague that came was the death of the firstborn. Remember what God said to the, to the Israelites. You must put the lamb's blood on the lintels of the door. And that angel of death will come over. The spirit of death will not come into the house. And will not take your child. Because we know that the blood of Jesus protects us over our home, over our families, over our livelihood, over whatever it is. When the blood is over you, the spirit of death cannot touch you. The destruction of the enemy cannot come against you. Nothing's going to touch you when the blood is over your life. Do you know that Pharaoh was seen as a god? He was actually seen as a son of Ra. How many of you know this? He was actually seen as the ultimate god that is in that region, that he had all the power like God. But God said, Pharaoh, I'm going to put you down on your knees. And the interesting fact about the story is that God said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Do you know that Pharaoh was not stubborn out of his own, but God even hardened his heart so that he would not turn in the first plague, that God could deal with all these plagues and show all of these gods up that he is the God that is in control. How many of you have been frustrated in your walk with God? Come on, be honest. Some of you frustrated with your walk with God. It's not going anywhere. It feels like you're going in circles. It feels like nothing's getting anywhere. It feels like there's no breakthrough. It feels like every year you come visit the church on and off once in a while, and things go well for a little bit, and then they go downhill again. Are there cycles of destruction in your life? Are there cycles where the enemy is stealing in your life, where he's destroying in your life, where death is coming into your life? I want to say to you this morning, it's time that we submit everything to God, that every idol that you bow down to, it's time to let down those idols and say, God, I'm going to bow down to you and you alone. I'm going to worship you and you alone.